and good day. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz from eTurbo News, and this is a breaking news update. For more news updates and shows, please go to youtube.com slash travel news group, youtube.com slash travel news group. Here's our update. Only in France, champagne with romantic happy bubbles. Oscar Wilde said, only the unimaginative can fail to find a reason for drinking champagne. The production of champagne dates back hundreds of years, and the accumulated know-how and substantial public relations have made France and French products one of the most emblematic wine countries on the planet. France is the only place in the world where a thirsty drinker can find the grapes and the vineyards that produce champagne. France and wine are synonymous as the product is an integral part of the country's agricultural, food and cultural history and identity. In 2018, France had approximately 786,000 hectares of vines, with a product of almost 46.4 hectoliters, making France the second largest producer of wine in the world by volume, just behind Italy. French production represents 16.5% of world wine production. From a surface perspective, one out of every 10 hectares of vines in the world is located in France. 2. Economic Engine the wine sector employs nearly 558,000 people, including 142,000 wine growers, and approximately 84,000 are members of one of the 690 French cooperative sellers, creating 300,000 direct jobs, 38,000 merchants, 3,000 sommeliers, 100,000 wine merchants, and 15,000 employees in the wine departments of supermarket distribution. Two-thirds of French wine production is consumed in France, and 85% of French households, 23 million, consume wine at home, 2017. 3. Almost 10 million wine tourists, 42% from abroad, visit the 10,000 French wine tourism cellars or the 31 museums dedicated to wine in France. Sending wine abroad. France is the world's largest exporter of wine, standing in front of Italy and Spain, with 29% of total value, making it a strategic product for French exports. In 2018, France exported nearly 14.9 hectoliters for nearly 8.9 billion euros, the equivalent of more than 100 Airbus aircraft. French exports are primarily, about 60%, destined for European countries, led by Germany and the United Kingdom, However, the main destination for French wines is the USA, 16% of total value exported, mainly in bottles. French Define Wine In 1907 wine was legally defined in France as a fermented drink, in which all elements must come from grapes, including water and especially flavors. The objective? To prohibit any illegal production likely to artificially increase production and risk causing wine prices to decline. Internationally wine has been defined, 1973, by the International Office of Wine, OIV, established in 1924, as exclusively the drink resulting from the complete or partial alcoholic fermentation of fresh grapes, crushed or not, or of grape must. Alcoholic strength may not be less than 8.5% by volume. The French wine sector is the first to have based its development on the designation of origin, preserving the expression of the terroir that excessive productivity would dilute. From an economic point of view, the tendency to prefer wines that are constrained in their yield guards against the risks of overproduction and price collapse. Producers of champagne ardently control the production process, protecting the reputation of the sparkling wine as a unique commodity. Champagne was the first region to be awarded an appellation, control delimitation, by the French state. The notion of delimitations became increasingly important in the early 20th century, as Champagne is important to the French national identity and helps to establish the ways in which terroir and the system of controlled appellations preserve a particularly French genealogy. 4. Champagne. Unintended consequence. History suggests that sparkling wine was born by accident the production of carbonic gas emerging from a secondary fermentation of yeasts. Many wines can sparkle however, champagne producers focus on the upmarket potential of the sparkling beverage, working hard to promote the distinctive qualities that hark back to aristocratic genealogies and myths of patrimony, linking the beverage, the place and the producers to a unique and upmarket past. 5. By the Belle Epoque, 1871-80, to drink champagne was to stake your claim to a civilized life. It became a national brand in an international market, a commodity with tremendous symbolic and cultural capital. Champagne is a blend. Champagne is a blended wine, and large family estates dominate with negotiants responsible for crushing, blending, aging, and marketing the wines. 
grapes and soil were the grower's only means of controlling the appropriation of champagne. The phylloxera epidemic of the 1890s threatened vignorants and negotiants, leading to the legitimization of the idea that Champagne as a defined region was fundamental to the identity of Champagne as a national and international beverage. There has always been tension between the grape growers and the negotiants. The growers sell about 23% of all bottles of Champagne, but over 92% of these sales are made in France. Many of the vignorants are members of one of the 137 cooperatives in the region and designed to provide small-scale producers with access to capital that they could not access individually and to strengthen their bargaining power in face of the superior economic power of merchants and middlemen. There are more cooperatives in Champagne than any other French wine region, and they are set up to process grapes and sell juice or still wine to the houses. There are four basic ways of handling grapes. 1. Press and sell juice. 2. Make a still wine which is sold. 3. Put the still wine through second fermentation and bottle and then sold. 4. Put the still wine through second fermentation and bottle and sell to others for marketing as their own product. 5. Produce an effervescent wine sold under their own label in competition with the negotiants and other growers. Champagne Brands Five groups currently control most of the champagne market. 1. Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, LVMH, largest in the luxury space. Moet et Chandon, 1743. Bouve Cliquet, 1772. Krug, 1843. Bruinert, 1764. Mercier, 1858. Others groups include 2. Branken Pomery, 1858, BCC, which owns Lanson, 1760. Boisel, 1834. Devenage, 1837. 3. Laurent Perrier, 1812, includes Salon, founded in 1911, one of the most prestigious houses in Champagne. Instead of making a range of styles that includes a prestige cuvee like most Champagne houses, Salon makes a single prestige cuvee, which is made entirely from Chardonnay from the village Le Maisonel sur Oger. Delamote, 1760. 4. Pernod Ricard, Multinational Drinks Group. Mum, 1827. Perrier Jowett, 1811. 5. Remy Contro. Charles and Piper Heidseek, 1851. 17 medium sized enterprises account for 33% of value. Tatinger, Origin 1734, Tatinger 1931. Louis Roeder, 1833. Bollinger, 1829. Paul Roger, 1849. The Nicolas Fuelet, highest selling champagne across French hyper and supermarkets in 2020, selling 4.5 million bottles, 2.6 million bottles more than the second most sold brand, Alfred Rothschild. The Fuelet brand, started in 1976, brings together 80 smaller, more localized cooperatives into one enterprise, indirectly uniting approximately 6,000 of the vignerons in the region. Nicolas Fuelet is the fourth or fifth largest brand in the world by volume. Two prestige QV champagnes that started the trend continue to be important in the luxury market. Moet's Dom Perignon and Roeder's Crystal. The House of Roeder started Crystal in the 19th century for the Imperial Court of Russia and Tsar Alexander II. The QV received its name from the unusual clear crystal bottle the Tsar insisted on using. Moet and Chandon, a very large producer, is a small percentage of Moet's total production. The wine was first marketed in the early 20th century, exclusively in England and the United States, becoming available in France in the mid-20th century. The ultimate in luxury. Consumers perceive champagne as a luxury and willingly pay premium prices for a product that costs approximately 9 euros to produce, basic non-vintage brut, it is smart marketing and quality consistency that has positioned it so successfully as both a symbol and a myth. Studies indicate that champagne is not a daily purchase in supermarkets. Only, on average, 1.8 purchases per person per year are made, as opposed to 5 purchases per person per year for sparkling wine as a whole, not including champagne. The research also indicates that 60% of consumers drink champagne for social or entertaining reasons, and the average age of a champagne consumer is between 35 to 64, with a strong female following between the ages of 17 to 24. Some markets are experiencing a decline in champagne sales, and this may be the appropriate time to expand the marketing efforts beyond celebration, extravagance and seduction, to broaden the options to aperitif and food-friendly. APSA brings a new champagne to New York. 6. 
If you are wine buyer, importer, distributor, agent, wine writer reviewer, sommelier or wine educator, you must meet with Pascal Fernand, the founder of the Association pour la Promotion des Vins et Spiritus, APSA, a non-profit organization that links boutique winegrowers winemakers with North American markets, including the USA, Mexico and Canada. Based in Montreal, Fernand has spent over 20 years introducing boutique wines and spirits producers to new markets and new consumers. 7. At a recent APSA event in New York City, I had the good fortune to meet with Matthew Coppin from Champagne Jacques Coppin, based in Vernoil, France. Currently Coppin Champagne is imported and distributed in California, Puerto Rico, Japan, the Netherlands Sweden, Denmark, Switzerland, Germany, Switzerland, South Africa and Cambodia. The family-owned, independent estate is located on a 10 hectares vineyard in the Marne Valley, where some of the most interesting and unique champagnes are produced. Pinot Munier, a grape indigenous to the area, is a focus of Coppin champagnes. The estate was started by Alfred Coppin in the late 19th century when he purchased vineyards in Vandiers. The winery was passed on to Maurice Brio and August Coppin, who took on leadership roles as they planted the first vines of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Starting in 1963 Jacques Coppin expanded the Vernoil business with his wife Anne-Marie, introducing the Champagne Jacques Coppin brand. Since 1995, Bruno and his wife, Marielle and their children, Matthew and Lucille, are leading the Coppin brand operations mixing tradition with modern technology. The vineyards are tended by hand, and vinification takes place in oak barrels, while thermoregulated stainless steel vats and micro-vinification allows the production of unique champagnes. Personal Coppin Favorites 8. Coppin produces many champagnes, and the following reflect my enthusiastic responses to a select few. 1. Polyphenols 2012. Extra Brut. 50% Chardonnay, 50% Pinot Noir. Polyphenols, vanilla compound, are natural to grapes. They are present in the skin, offering color and aromas, and considered beneficial to health. Professor Jeremy Spencer, Department of Food and Nutritional Sciences, University of Reading, finds that polyphenols have the potential to influence cognitive functioning, such as memory. Other research from the university revealed that two glasses of champagne a day may be good for your heart and circulation and could reduce the risks of suffering from cardiovascular disease and stroke. The polyphenols Coppin grapes were manually harvested during September 19-20, 2012, and pressed within six hours, disgorgement occurred by freezing with jetting, and no SO2 was added. The wine was bottled on March 8, 2013, in French-made cinnamon-colored glass from the OISAS France de Reims factory. There is no chilling or filtering, malolactic fermentation, no finings. Racking with alcoholic fermentation. Active dry yeast set at up to 17 degrees centigrade in steel vats. Cellar aged for at least 108 months at 11 degrees centigrade with a capped cork and P103 seal. This brut, half Chardonnay and half Pinot Noir, delivers a delightful golden hue to the eye, ripe white fruit, green apples, plums, grapefruit, honey, and toasted notes to the nose, and then thrusts a unique and tantalizing structure to the palate that is underscored by marked acidity. Dense, complex and delicious, this champagne provides a long and happy finish. Pair with pork, salmon, tuna, shellfish or soft mild cheese. 2. Rose Brut. 60% Pinot Noir, 25% Munir, 15% Chardonnay from three villages in the Marne Valley, Benuel, Vincelles, Vandiers. 9. Sustainable viticulture with limited use of synthetic products. Manual harvest followed by pneumatic pressing. The partial fermentation is started at a low temperature in stainless steel tanks, delivering an off-dry wine with low alcohol content. The wine is then lightly filtered to keep the yeasts. Fermentation restarts naturally for a minimum of two months, the overpressure created in the bottle prevents new fermentation. The disgorgement is done by decanting the bottle under pressure, with a sterile filtration. Deep coral pink to the eye along with lively bubbles. The nose is delighted with the soft aromas of fresh cherries and strawberries. The palate enjoys the discovery of red fruit balanced by herbs and light acidity. Enjoys an aperitif or with crab cakes, duck, fish and chocolate-based desserts and fruit. 3. Le Boucher Extra Brut. 100% Pinot Noir made from a blend of harvests from the 2012, 2013 and 2014, from the Boucher plot. The vines were planted in 1981 with a 41B rootstock. The plot is southwest-facing, with a very low slope at the bottom of hills, predominantly clay loamy soil with little limestone, and very rich in iron. Grapes are hand-picked and pressed within six hours. Disgorgement by freezing with jetting with no added S02. Bottled in March, April or May after picking, in lighter weight, 
French made glass champagne bottles from O1 de Reims factory. No chilling or filtering. Racking after avmalolactic fermentation not performed. No finings. Alcoholic fermentation. Active dry yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae galactus at 18 degrees centigrade in steel vats. Disgorgement aid engraved on bottle base and cork, rests for five to six months before sale. For additional information on wines available through APSA, click here. Dr. Eleanor Gairley. This copyright article, including photos, may not be reproduced without written permission from the author. More news about wine. Number Wines. Number Champagne. Thank you for listening to our news update. There's more on youtube.com slash travel news group. Or you can read us, of course, in going to our news portal at etobernews.com or travelnews.online.